Hello everyone, my name is Mirna and on behalf of the Mindalia TV team, we want to welcome you to Mindalia live streaming, where thousands of people around the world gather daily to see the lectures and interviews organized by Mindalia TV. Today with us, we have the great pleasure of having Sunny Chase. She is not only the host of this show, but she's also host of ABC Solutionary Sundays. She is the feature writer and chief strategist for Whole Life Times, the longest running conscious life magazine in America. Sunny is a producer, moderator, and mythbuster, among many other talents. And before starting with Sunny and our very special guest, we want to remind you that Mindalia's mission is to share information that can help raise the level of consciousness around the world. And you can help us by subscribing to our channel, leaving us a positive comment on this video or sharing it with someone that you know that is gonna benefit of the content that we're gonna be talking here today. Also, while we are live streaming, we have an active chat. It's a screen you're gonna be seeing on my side or under the video if you're following us from a smartphone. Uh, we also want you to know that you can collaborate with Mindalia with your own valuable content. And for that, you can just go to our website on the top. You are going to find a link that says collaborate with Mindalia. And that link takes you to a form that you can fill out for our technical team to be getting in contact with you. Remember that you can collaborate with Mindalia in English through Mindalia TV English, but you can also do it in Spanish through Mindalia Televisión and Portuguese through Mindalia Televisão. Visit our different channels and platforms follow our Facebook pages and Instagram accounts. With that, you are not only helping us reach as much people in the planet as possible, but you also keep yourself updated with the amazing information that we share there on a daily basis. We are not delaying this any further, and I have the great pleasure of introducing Sunny Chase. Sunny, welcome to my Dahlia Live Streaming. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. I'm call I'm here with you from LA, as you know, and it's been raining and now the sun is out, so it's perfect timing. And we have tea and we're ready to talk about a new way of um you know, being, I mean, I, I'm old enough to remember when, you're probably not, but I'm old enough to remember when businesses were uh, held in a much more uh, conscious way. I mean, also when people were thinking of ideas about to, what to do about a business, for example, it was usually solving a problem and um, or coming up with something new. You know, I think of Wendy's Burgers or or Tom Shoes or Carl's Jr. or you know different businesses that we think of that are um, you know we just eat their burgers or we wear their shoes. But you know, originally those companies were coming up with something that they thought would be fun or innovative or something that never had been be done before. And it's like okay, and we're going to serve our community. We're going to have a great time doing it. We're going to serve our family. And um, it's gotten really out of control. So, um, you know, and I know with Venezuela, of course, that's a whole other subject, but it's, it's so painful um, to see how corruption and greed can just be something that we really need to shift somehow in our global consciousness. So yeah. what do you think about that? I, um, I definitely think that it's, it's that disconnection from what we really are a disconnection from our <clears throat> true self and we just crave so much and we think that that thing we're craving is in the material world we think that thing we're craving is a pair of shoes or a bigger tv or the bigger house or the latest car or the trendiest cell phone and all that is only um it's we think it's feeling the emptiness within us so yeah. we just need to grow and grow and grow and grow in the material, in the outside. But we are never taught how to actually feed our spirit. Yeah. And I think also what I see around me is that I see that there's so many ways now, because there are so many challenges, to be really, really creative. You know, and, and I'm seeing it everywhere. I'm seeing it with little kids. I'm seeing it with uh, scientists. I'm seeing with, you know, phenomenal collaborations that are going on. And so uh, with our guest today, there's this, uh, I'm not sure if he came up with the term creative catalyst. I've seen it around and I love it so much. Um, or the super creatives, uh, you know, as kind of a, as kind of a new way of being, you know, as, as another way, you know, there are the CEOs, the managers, and then there are these creative catalysts, um, 
that are in part of the business model that uh, Whitney Vosberg is going to be chatting with us about one of the things, one of the many things. And I love that because I think we have the, you know, the sort of dad or mom that's a CEO and then the managers that are kind of making everything happen. And then the creative catalysts are the ones that are pushing the boundaries, creating a new boundary, going someplace, you know, a place we've never been before, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> and so I'm really grateful to know that we can um, have creative catalysts in our world. And I think not only in business, but in every part of our life. So I think that I'm going to just go ahead and bring on Whitney Vosberg. I think I should do that. He is the co-pathfinder, <laughs> I like that, of a really great book that I, I just read called working the future together and then it has the tagline a faster path to purpose and um whitney among many many other things has uh worked in asia europe and america ceo of brand new purpose that's the name of his uh, of the company that he's CEO of um that he's uh, he's a chief marketing officer and he um like our angel, that's why I'm sort of sad angel isn't here today. He's uh, really, really advises lots of different entrepreneurs on every level, you know, how to make it rock better. Um, and so he, uh, I'm so excited that he's written this book and he's included, I mean, he's written other books as well. Um, and so we can chat about all those things, but I think we should just go ahead and bring on Whitney and get to it. Welcome, Whitney. Welcome. <laughs> So Whitney, you were listening to our conversation a bit, I'm hoping. I was, yes. So dive in, mister. <laughs> well, I think a, a framework would help. Yes, so, go for and, it. And, and you've touched upon a number of points, Sonny, which is that we had the old story of purpose first based on extraction, exploitation, cronyism, with a focus on the shareholder. It took us as far as it could take us with the triple bottom line of profit, people, planet. What we have now, just in time, is the new emerging story of purple curse, based on addition, creativity, enoughness, with a focus on stakeholders that includes shareholders, but it includes everyone who is touched by the activities of an organization, a company, an institution, including the places where they do business. And that has led us to flipping the triple bottom line to planet, people, profit. Why? Very simple. If there's no planet, there's no people. If there's no people, there's no profit. It's that simple. Pretty simple, exactly. You know, I was uh, one of the points in your book that I love is uh, when you were saying that we need a new story based on purpose, not profit. You know, I think that it is a new story, but it is also an ancient story. You know, of course, this is the way that uh, that civilizations, or certainly the Aboriginal, have worked for many thousands of years. Actually, for example, the Bushmen for sixty thousand years in really understanding the taking care of the planet, of taking care of everything around them, of being very, very sacred. You know, they um, they have such a way, uh, just to speak, just for a quick second about where we can, I love the idea that we don't have to, re, we don't have to invent it, it's already here. Um, for example, there's a picture uh, that my dad took of a baby in Africa 40 years ago in the bush in Kalahari. And there's a little baby, maybe a year and a half, with an ostrich egg in his lap. And he's just looking up with a big smile. Now that ostrich egg is very rare to have. It would be like, and that ostrich egg um, is what they use, one of the things they use to carry water. And what I think is also so amazing to think of that baby holding it is it would be like for us to put a, um, a, a Fabergé egg in the lap of a baby or a very, very expensive crystal, you know, that we would never do that because the baby would probably just break it. But the Bushman from the very essence, of the minute the baby is born has that sense of not breaking things, you know, of the value of every 
single thing. So I think that's something that we, we have kind of lost. We are a little bit disposable, well, very much disposable, single use plastic usage, all these kinds of things. So I think just setting the stage that indeed we have it on this planet and let us let us remember again, let us not break the ostrich egg. <laughs> yes, um, to put it in its most simple form, what we need to do, especially men, to take the longest journey of all, of the 18 inches from head to heart. Because many of us have become disconnected. For many hundreds of thousands of years, humankind were kind to one another and the earth. There was plenty, enough, more than enough for everyone. Mm -hmm. Because the ruling paradigm was to keep everything in balance and, and with a sense of enoughness, the, the abundance in enoughness, being happy and delighted with what you have, not with mm -hmm. not what you don't have. So that over time, we went from being part of nature to being apart from nature. Yeah. And we, we somehow went from humankind, where we truly were kind, to mankind, where we really became truly unkind. Because man, with the rise of patriarchy, considered uh, himself to be superior to that of woman and to the earth. So we have been in a patriarchal domination uh, through exploitation that has just been disastrous and soul destroying as well as earth destroying. So we need to reverse that, take go back to where we came from, which is to have man, woman, woman, man as a indivisible expression of us all being one, a part of something much greater and being better together. Yes, and I think that when we really uh, understand what that's all about and why, I think that's so, so important. Um, I, something that you also wrote in your book, I love this so much, what's your why and why is that? And um, that's a question that I ask myself all the time, and I think it's a really important question to ask ourselves whenever we are doing something. Um, you know, why am I doing this show with you today? I mean, I get pretty clear about that before I even uh, chat with you. Uh, when I write an article for Whole Life Times, uh, people have asked me, oh, do you, you know, do you get assignments and do it? Never, never, never. Gina Silvati, the editor, uh, just knows that I come to her with something burning that I have to say. Even though I often think, why am I saying it? It's not it surprises me that I feel like it would be my place to say it, but it hasn't been said yet. So I, it's left to me and I feel very humble and, and sometimes scared and sometimes, uh, you know, many tears and sometimes sleepless nights thinking, why me? <laughs> but then it's just, I just know I, I just got to do it. So that why I think is so important to ask ourselves. I think before we do anything, so I love that you asked that question, what's your why and why is that? Well, the whole thing is <clears throat> what we are suffering is a, not only a, an existential crisis on this planet at this time, but it's a spiritual crisis. We don't know why we are here individually and collectively. The whole point is to go inside to where all the answers are. Within us, there all is the kindling for a superb bonfire that we need to light and let blaze to share our heat and our light with one another, to be beacons of hope for one another. But the thing is, we have to find our own match no one else's match will work. We have to find our own match. So within us, we all have a unique gift or set of gifts. So we have to travel from the head, the home of the why, to the heart, 
the home of the who and the where. In other words, what is my unique gift? With whom do I share it with? Who will most benefit from it? And where do I find them? And then finally, to the hands, from head to heart to hands. How do I best share my unique gifts with those who most benefit from them? Mm, beautiful, beautiful. Well, and uh, yes, I love that you do have that. I just wrote down a couple of quotes from your book, actually. Balance, your kind of paraphrasing, balance your head with your heart, engage mind, body, and spirit to guide you. And then I sort of added to that, to life's practices, people, places, and play. <laughs> I'm, I feel that, again, uh, we had the Bushman elders on last week, and one of the things that they do very much is a static play, a static dance, a static singing. And I think that that's one thing that um, I know for me whew, allows me to feel connected with my body so much with my heart and my spirit. And it gives me a, a sort of a deeper feeling of why I am here. You know, when I'm kind of going through the motions of getting stuff done and accomplishing this and making sure I get that done and everything. Yes, yes, I'm in it, I'm in it. But when I'm with people and I'm playing and I'm dancing and singing and you know just enjoying good food and laughing, I think, ooh, that's really why I'm here. So I just wanted to add that word play to our conversation. <laughs> yes, uh, particularly play in a communal setting. Yeah, I like to play with other people for sure. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. You know, one thing that we were talking about, um, you know, specifically because you're a business person and uh, CEO and all of that, you know, as far as having this be about sort of changing the model of finances and everything. I learned about a company in uh, LA here in Santa Monica. And when I was a little girl, I've, I've traveled a lot. I've been back and forth to L.A., but I was in L.A. Uh, we lived here for a couple of years when I was 10. And there's a place called Hot Dog on a Stick. And it's a place in Santa Monica. It is a an iconic place where these girls wear, girls and guys wear sort of 60s outfits. And they have hot dogs and they dip them in um this kind of corn batter and fry it. And then uh, the most incredible lemonade ever. And it's right on the beach. So the sand is right there. It's a little kind of hot. Well, it's turned in, you know, it's, it's now in malls and things like that. But I found out that the owner, when he started this, the dad um, gave every single person who joined, you know, who was a worker there, shares in the company, every single person. And so the company is, he passed away some years ago and the kids um, and all of the people basically who've worked there are all owners of the company. And I just love to hear that model because I don't know how many models are like that. I, I know there are very few, uh, but you know, it's that idea that when I look at big companies and I look at somebody like, I forgot his name right now, I don't, I'm not remembering, but the CEO of Chase who makes 34 million a year, and then they're the people who work there make make thirteen seventy five an hour, thirteen dollars seventy five an hour. Um, so they're making just you know a fraction of what he is. And I'm thinking, dude, like you cannot make that money if the people don't open that door at Chase. You know, if they're not cleaning the toilets, if they're not sweeping the floors, if they're not doing all and that all the way up, there is no Chase. So I just I'm sad that can you not hear me? I can't. I, no, I, you lost me for about a minute. Oh, OK. Um, but I'm just thinking about how odd it is and how bombastic it is that the uh, tops of these companies feel somehow somehow that it's cool to to have such a different set of experiences when they're all working together for the same goal, it seems to me. So I think that's what you're addressing. But it, that, the that, balance. That, that's a clear demonstration of the lack of connection between head and heart. Yeah, yeah. Where not? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can feel you. I can feel you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I definitely have a question. I really like what you said about the what, the who, and the how. So uh, my first question is, why are we so disconnected? And the follow-up question would be, what can we do 
to not only learn ourselves how to reconnect with our life purpose, the sustainability and the application of that life purpose, and how can we teach that to our children? Great questions. In 2019, we not only have lack of leadership, true leadership, at all levels and all walks of society, nationally and globally, but we have a lack of modeling of, uh, of, of example of true leadership uh, on an epic scale. So, so there's no one to, to emulate, to copy, to be inspired by in, 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 in the traditional sense of, of a leader who's appointed or elected. So spiritual bankruptcy on multiple levels. And we have become far too dependent on looking to external sources for our direction, our meaning, uh, our happiness. It has to stop. We all need to look inside where all the answers are. Nobody can tell you what you need to know because you already know it. We need to become our own leader. No one else can or will do that. It's, it's uh, frankly, it's called becoming an adult. There are all too many of us of all ages who are grown up children who refuse to take responsibility for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So when we say, hey, I'm it that's when you know that you have become a true adult. You are responsible for everything you do and don't do. And I'd like to add one thing to that that we were talking about earlier, uh, and I read something about this in one part of your book too, which I completely agree. Uh, another way to do that, Myrna, as far as um, – uh, taking what Whitney's saying and once maybe one step further when we're even thinking about how our society is, for example, in America, um, is to actually pay attention to our uh, the lower, how do I say, the lower bushes of, not bushes, I, I don't want to use that word because people think of actual bush, um, but the plants of our democracy. So often we pay a lot of attention to the president and then perhaps governors and senators. But really where the work is done is the assembly people, the Congress people, the judges, the, um, the school superintendents, and those are the really, really important, in, in a lot of ways, almost more important places because the way our structure is in our government is that we have all these little like in California, we have a small little state, you know, with the whole such, you know, executive, judicial, and um, what am I forgetting? Legislative. And so we have all that there. And if we really pay attention to those areas, those are the people that really serve us and we can work with them and make our community much more the way we as sacred spiritual people want to outpicture our tag were it and then take that a little bit further and to our community so i i believe that too yes uh, it, it's all about the old story of profit first was based on patriarchal top-down control the future the new story of purpose first is bottom up and it's on two levels. One, the individual level. In terms of our inner transformation, we need to go from head to heart to the gut. So you have intellectual, emotional, and intuitive. It's only when the three of them are in alignment then that we are able to go out into the world from head to heart to hands, the external way, to embrace our lives, in community so that we can be better together. Mm. And just the most recent uh, congressional uh, elections, there are all kinds of people in Congress now whose faces 
have never been seen before or very rarely, whether it be people uh, of color or a woman or uh, of the LGBTQ uh, spectrum. Um, that is the culture. It, it's the bottom up feeding the tree that will grow into something better because we have a choice now. Destruction or creation. Yeah. Fear and greed or love and enoughness. Yes. Amen. Let's talk a little bit about the concept of creative catalyst because I just dig that so much. <laughs> so, you know, we have, uh, and you were also saying, Whitney, in your book that we, and I wrote, I wrote down, let's play with innovation and taking us to transformation. So those are actually two slightly, I mean, they feed to each other, but they're a little bit, uh, they, you know, let's go dive in with each of them, I think, mm -hmm. or however you want to dress them. But the creative catalyst, I think, um, you know, I, I wrote down, uh, and I think this might be your quote or maybe mine, but who cares at this point? <laughs> Create purpose and constantly renew their sense of purpose. They continually invent and reinvent themselves, their work, their world. They are the grain of sand in the oyster that creates the pearl. No, that is you. I actually quoted you there. Um, so, yes, let's talk about that because I think we can use that in every aspect of our lives. All people out there, no matter where you are in your community. Yes. The old story of profit first was based on a hierarchy of executives, managers, and employees. Well, two categories have changed. The third one's going away. So that executive managers who are just senior managers, they forget that. They're not truly executives. They're managers, just senior. So they uh, are becoming leaders. Managers are becoming organizers. And the, But the greatest change is that we're shifting from employees to creative catalysts. And the greatest difference is, you know, the future work, sadly, in the short term, but in the long term, it means many more wonderful uh, opportunities for individual and societal uh, recreation, reinvention, renewal, is that the future work is not working. The jobs as we know them are going to become ever fewer. Creative catalysts can be employees, but more often are not. They are people who are self-propelling. They have a lust for life, an insatiable curiosity, asking why and why not. What am I here for what is my reason what's my gift who do i share my gift who will most benefit from my gift where do i find them how do i best share so that they are creating the future then leaders of organizations will say oh based on these things that i have come across from the creative cloud from the uh, creative catalyst the vision for our organization is that and we're going that direction then the former managers are the organizers and they will make sure that this is where we came from this is where we are our leader says we're going this way working backwards step by step we're going to make it happen so you have an ever smaller shrinking pool of people at headquarters for organizations, companies, and you're having a larger growing and ever more diverse pool of talent that will be an inter uh, exchange from ideas, um, inventions, new ways of seeing, being, doing, uh, so there's sort of a, a dance, a fluidity. And what's happening is that instead of having a career, people are going to have a personal portfolio 
of learning and earning experiences of projects. So that it becomes more of the Hollywood model where production teams come together, everyone's an expert in their own field, and they make the, the, the movie or the project or the product, product or the experience, and they disband and then they uh, reintegrate in new and different ways so that we're moving into a brave new world where lifelong security, long-term employment, um, large organizations going bye-bye. Mm -hmm. So it is ever more important to know why am I here? What is my unique gift? Okay, so but yes, yeah, that's, that's so uh, fascinating. So with Creative Catalyst, what I like about that, I understand everything that you're saying about where we're going. And I think that to know that that, I mean, okay, so if indeed what you're saying is true, which I, I believe it most probably is, um, you know, it's cool. It's not, you know, it's not anything to be afraid of. And what I think with the Creative Catalyst concept or the sand in the oyster that creates the pearl, which I really love, um, is that we all have an opportunity to be creative catalysts in our own life. I mean, that's what I really love uh, when I read that. And I read it a couple other places where it is a new day, you know, and there are new skill sets needed for us and there are new ways of being. And it means um, what you're actually describing is that a way that we've been doing business, you know, for many, many years, certainly that sort of 50s model where, you know, dad went off to work, mom was home, leave it to Beaver, all that, June Beaver. Um, and that's that's kind of gone uh, and in a lot of cases will continue to be gone and so what it means now is what you know what do we do and we have the opportunity to you know perhaps let go of fear like that was a way that was like a big boat that we that we may have felt that we were in in the safety way and it's like now we've got to let go of the boat get in the water and go somewhere completely new you know new frontier and in a lot of ways it feels scary i'm sure but that's what I'm excited about, about super creatives or creative catalysts where, where we're seeing our life, we have what we have around us and it's like, now what? You know, what can we do that's new? What, how do we grow our own food now? You know, some of the, of the aspects will be the ancient mixed in with the, um, you know, the Fred Flintstone mixed in with the Judy Jetson, <laughs> you know, the ancient and the, and the, the you know, the future, or the, you know, the Star Trek aspect. So that's what I'm excited about exploring is how can we let go, you know, shake it off the old and find what our new is, even yeah. though we're scared because we may be scared, but still, to do, you know, find it somehow. Yes, I, I couldn't agree more. Uh you know, as, as with every pendulum that swings one direction, there's a counter pendulum swinging the other direction. Mm -hmm. So here's a possible scenario. Yes, we, it's ultimately, we are the sum of our choices, individually and collectively. So it's about making new, better choices, more informed choices. But the way we're going is that we're going to have the 1% who own most of everything that can be owned in a sort of material sense. We'll have the 9% who are the, um, the professional class, and then we're gonna have the 90% who are going to own little in terms of what we used to own materially, but we'll be able to own so much more. So we have the 1%, the which is driven by the old story of profit first, mm -hmm. which is head driven. We're going to have the 90%, which is the new story of purpose fate first, which is heart driven, mm -hmm. people and heart driven, purpose based mm -hmm. against the head based profit uh, focus. Uh, and then we're going to have people in between who are the professional class and they will have a choice. They will either be the servants to the 1% or servant leaders to the 90%. Mm -hmm. And it will be fluidity be between the three groups. What, what will happen is that on the one hand with pen pendulum swinging one way, there will be ever greater concentration of financial wealth, control, um, influence, um, 
power in uh, urban settings on the coasts within the United States where there is the economic, uh, financial, educational, and technological centers. And then you're going to have the suburbs to the countryside where you're going to have people who are going to move more towards back to the land. Part because they have no choice, part by they realize that there's something wonderful, healthy, sustaining, and sacred in growing your own food, in barter, in forming smaller communities where you know each other by face, by name, by sharing one's gifts. So you're going to have a blend of the two. Mm -hmm. uh, and sadly, this is already happening now uh, in terms of the, the tremendous suffering. Uh, the greatest suffering is from hanging on to what was, that is old, that is gone, that's crumbling to dust. You cannot embrace the new while holding on to the old. You have a choice. Either you hold on desperately for the old and you'll see it disintegrate, or you open yourself up to possibility and embrace the future. Embrace one another. Yes. As the Dalai Lama says, that it, you just explained suffering is uh, not uh, not appreciating what is and wanting what isn't. And that's, you know, that's what I'm saying. Like you say that you agree with me about the boat situation. It's like we are we are very used to. Well, and we've been really told what what is success, what is accomplishment, what is the right way, the way to live our lives. So, you know, at this point, I think that um, enough of us out there, the people who listen to Mandalia TV and watch Mandalia TV and, and um, you know, our tribe um, are really interested in seeing how we are going to work with, I mean, the newness, because we have been seeing that there are changes, will be changes and need to be changes for many, many years now, you know, since probably the mid 60s, people uh, before us were saying, hmm, you know, there's a, there's got to be a new way. There's got to be another way because this is kind of not working. And then oddly enough, we've continued, you know, 70s, 80s, 90s. I mean, it's, you know, we went into the 80s where greed was good and Gordon Gecko and um, Broad Street and, and Drexel Burnham and all these, you know, companies where that was really um, the model was walking over dead bodies literally or kicking people and uh going above them and that was really a badge of honor you know now at least i feel that that is changing where people are feeling um a little more uh <laughs> how shall i say uh, not wanting that to be uh, known as much that they're doing that but it's strange in my entire in my lifetime to know that there was literally a time when it was absolutely cool to rip somebody off and um you know now at least i feel that that is changing at least uh, somewhat so i feel like we have the responsibility at least i could say i feel like i do and guests who come on, on this show and others to model um a new way and or at least give permission for all of you guys out there who are listening to this show and chatting with your other people throughout the day in your life to find out what is your next, you know, what is next? Um, and maybe it is moving to the land. Maybe it is, you know, all of the things that you've just described, Whitney, and there might be a combination of that, which I'm sure there will be, which will create something new. And then there may, you know, there may be something new. I mean, people, Elon Musk is talking about going to the moon and there are people who are talking about living underwater. And, you know, I don't know, but I'm willing to take a bit of sand and, put it in my oyster and figure out something new <laughs> because I think that would be great fun and joy and finding the, finding the joy because I do believe that that is really what we're meant to be experiencing here and you know however we're managing it on the outside the joy is what we're meaning to be in literally in so yikes let's find it let's be it let's be about it <laughs> let's be all about it <laughs> Yeah, it, it used to be said that uh, be the change you wish to see, but that yeah. no longer is uh, the order of the day. It's be the transformation you wish to see. The reason yeah. why is that you hear we hear so much, especially in the business world, about innovation. Innovation is just making certain changes 
to stay in place today. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it's just, you know, what you got to do to survive. But to Isn't it sort of like moving the uh, furniture on the Titanic in a way at this point? Yeah. <laughs> it, it will look a little different, but in the meanwhile, you're, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whereas with transformation, it, it's making such a great change that it becomes irreversible. And that's mm -hmm. what you have to do in order to stay ahead of the wave, let alone keep up with it. Uh, it's like people used to talk about sustainability. When it was, when the notion of sustainability was introduced, it was way ahead of its time, but it proved to be undoable given our mind frame of mind in the last 20, 30 years. So now we have to go to regeneration, which is making things better than you found them. Yes, so, amen. So proactive thing. So that, so yes. Sustainability is like innovation. Regeneration is like transformation. Mm, I love that. And again, I mean, we say like how, I mean, I can ask you the question, which I feel Myrna about to ask, which is how do we do that? <laughs> we are connected, Sunny. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, and I think that what we do, I think what we're doing right now, if I can say in this moment on this very day, what we are doing right this very moment is we're giving ourselves permission, the three of us right now, right here to do that. We are giving ourselves permission to transform something, to allow, to, to open up something that hasn't been opened before. And even though it's a little fearful, um, uh, for ourselves to to open up something and see what happens and for all of us of course it, it can be baby steps it can be spiritual breadcrumbs as I like to say it can be you know a little opening of the flower we have here um, a few petals that open a little more and see what that does um, I think that is the answer is to maybe and i don't know if that's enough for the world you know maybe that's too little too late but i feel like it is a sustainable if we want to use that word um way for we as a species or we as a spiritual community to start you know we need to start somewhere so i feel like i'd like to give us all that permission today to start somewhere and open something up Come on, people, let's do it. <laughs> we can do it. We can do it. Yeah, and then we'll have a ripple effect, hopefully. Yeah, it, it's interesting, Sonny, because we have these two complementary things, the left hand and the right hand. It doesn't matter which one's left, which one's right. But just the fact that there are two appendages um, that's connected to the same body so that we have the individual and we have society, but yet it's all part of the same body. Um, and that in order to get intimate with others, we have to get intimate with ourselves. Yeah. There are all too many of us who are, will do anything to avoid going deep inside, becoming intimate with oneself, to truly knowing one's true self by going beyond the ego, by quieting down through silence, through meditative practices, through getting grounded so that you can move beyond the, the chattering monkeys of our ego mind to our inner self, our in true intuitive in integrated self where all the answers are. So we have to get have to go inside before we can go outside. You know, get all the good stuff, kindness, charity, what have you starts inside. We have to be kind to ourselves so that we're more likely to be kind to others, kind to our planet. And yes, there, there's talk about, you know, um, this person and th that billionaire and that multimillionaire going off to Mars or the moon. The thing is, that's a pipe dream. It will not happen for a majority of people for a very, very long time. It's uh, if, if we destroy this planet, and this is a remarkably hospitable planet, why would the moon or the Mars be more hospitable? I'm right with you, brother. I don't like the idea of, yeah, we're going to we're going to just 
consider earth disposable we're going to go somewhere else at all um, i was just sort of bringing that up as an idea of that people are thinking of other things but yeah i i completely agree with you that is not the solution to this problem never no. never never no 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 it, it, I just, <laughs> what were you going to say, Myrna? Yes, that I, I also I agree a lot with you guys. I mean, that is like the extrapolation of what uh, Whitney was saying. We are so scared of diving within, of, you know, encountering with ourselves. And you can extrapolate that with the uh, fantasies of going to another planet. Like, why would I go to the bottom of the sea if I can go somewhere else? Why would I listen to the rivers in the planet if I can go and listen to the not water in other planets? Yeah. Um, completely agree with you guys. Yes, I can't even, I can't, I, I definitely don't feel that. However, I do feel that I know that we don't know everything. You know, I know, I know enough to know that I really don't know very much. And I'm excited about finding out what I do know. You know, one thing that I really appreciate about myself is that I am curious. Um, and then I also am afraid to change, but I do it anyway. And um, that's something that uh, I've always been like, and I would like to be more of that. <laughs> My birthday is coming up. So this is the time of um, many spiritual people say, uh, and I think it's great practice the month before your birthday to clean up things from your life that like maybe things you have with people or something like that. And also to prepare for the next, like the new year. And that's one thing that I'm really looking at is, um, seeing where my fear is about changing, letting go of the boat, <laughs> getting in the water and allowing the current to take me somewhere new. And so I think when I'm um, thinking about your book, Working the Future Together, that is exactly what we're talking about is that it is the future and we don't want more of the same. We don't want, like you're saying, Whitney, the innovation, we want the transformation. We want something, um, new and yet of course based in ancient ways i i believe i think because i think the ancient ways kind of rock so um and yet what is our new with taking the ancient ways the modern ways that we're in right now and then what is that new thing i i don't know i really don't know and i don't know for me personally i don't know if it is going to a farm or you know i just don't know but i think that is where um, the, the fear can be the scary part of the unknown and then taking some deep breaths and, and just allowing, you know, somehow allowing the new to come to us. We believe in angels or we believe in our own power. We believe in our own creativity or it is the sand, um, little bit of sand that goes into the oyster that creates something magical and completely new that was never there before. That pearl was not there, wasn't even a seed of that. So I just, that's what I want to give myself permission for as I'm chatting with you today. <laughs> that's what I want to do for you guys. And then it will go to other people, I hope. <laughs> yeah. So Sunny, you're, you're a Gemini. Uh-huh. So you know what they say about Geminis. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> a few things I know. <laughs> uh, they have uh, a good side and an even better side. Oh, thank you. I like the way you put that. <laughs> yes, and the balance. It's all about the balance. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the grit in the oyster shell uh, that makes the pearl, the grit is starting to go from head to heart to gut, to becoming more heartfelt, more intuitive, and asking why, always asking why. It, it, it basically, we have individually and, and societally been asleep. We have been zombies. We don't question air. It's, it's the stuff that we exist in. We breathe it. We don't see it. We don't taste it. We don't hear it very often, unless there's wind. You only see it secondarily through the motion of wind, but that is our culture. And there's so many, there's so much garbage that we have heard 
seen, experienced, been told, been taught, read, that never was true, not true now, and is not true for us as individuals and societies. We need to say, enough, time out. Or put another way, what's the future? <laughs> what's true for us as individuals and as people and, and as societies? Enough of this garbage. Well, enough of complacency. That's what I like to say too. And by the way, the pearl is one of the, uh, uh, it's not actually a gemstone, but it's the only um, kind of lovely thing, I guess you can say that you put in jewelry that is for the Gemini is the pearl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, you know, just to uh, mention that. So Whitney, we are actually coming to the end of our show, and so I want to make sure that we get everything in. And I just, was just looking at my notes, and we've covered so much. But um, one of the things that I want to quickly just go over, because I know we have like two more minutes, is um, I love opening the imagination and the possibility you wrote in your book, Six Components of Collaboration. And I feel like collaboration is really where it's at, baby. Like we used to say, awareness, motivation, participation, mediation, reciprocity, and self-synchronization. Synchronization. Um, so I think that's so beautiful and awesome to, I just want to throw that into our conversation and not lose that opportunity. And um, we need a new story, people. We need a new story. And Whitney, um, I hope people read this book, Working the Future Together. There are actually two books. There's one that's more extensive and there's one that's more of a um, kind of a, a book to have with you all the time to sort of re to use as reference. So I highly recommend that you guys um, get this book and read it and, you know, find out what your why is and find out what your balance is or find out where you're out of balance and, and you know, get that balance. Because I think that's really what we're talking about in, that's out picturing in the world is out of balance. You know, Myrna, you were talking about sort of how do we connect it and what's up and how do we do all that? And I think it's it's really the out picturing of, of uh, serious out of balanceness <laughs> that we see and feel and experience. And that's what we can really work with ourselves, with our with our activities, with our food, with our finances, with our with our priorities, with our uh, the way we spend our time, and um, and just balance, balance, balance. I think, and then I think that will really help our our planet too. I want to uh, add two things, uh, Sunny. Collaboration uh, actually is a uh, somewhat complex multifaceted uh, process. If I can sum it up into this, there's a reason why we have two of these and one of these. <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to um, alert our uh, viewers that you can find the Work the Future Today books on Amazon. Okay. And we have uh, a website, which is www.workthefuture.today. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. And um, and so very, very good. And thank you. And I know Myrna's going to say it is our time. I'm watching our clock. And so I really, really want to thank you, Whitney, for being with us today and having this amazing conversation. And um, so Myrna, we've taken care of where people can find Whitney pretty clearly. I think we've got that. And I know I meant to let you guys know that you can follow me on all the ways. And it's Sunny Che, C-H-A-Y-E-S. And on Solutionary Sundays on Sunday on ABC. And also, um, you can check me out in the Whole Life Times magazine, which is online, wholelifetimes.org, or um, just at the newsstands all over LA. And of course, next Thursday here with uh, Verna, and hopefully, Angel will be back. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And please say uh, hello to Angel for me. <laughs> we will. Thank you so much, guys, for allowing Mindalia being a channel for your ideas, for your wisdom. Thank you for sharing time with us. To our audience, of course, thank you, as always, 
for following us, for liking, for subscribing, all our platforms, not only Mindalia TV English, but also Mindalia Televisa and Mindalia Televisión. Is there any other way where our audience can find you, Whitney, besides the website for your book? Do you have social media, an email, anything that you would like them to know? Uh, yes, uh, my uh, Twitter handle is Brand Guru. Nice. Right. I like it. <laughs> thank you again. And uh, Sunny, thank you one more time for being for being Sunny. Thank you. And you. we are sending a very, very big hug from our heart to yours. And until next time, bye-bye. Bye-bye.